Scott's got amazing scenery and wildlife, incredible Victorian engineering, and a water supply that's used by millions in both the Midlands and South Wales. Well, it must be the Ellen Valley. The estate is owned by Dŵr Cymru Welsh Water and is the largest single area of land owned by any of the national water companies. For over a hundred years, the watershed area of the reservoirs has been safeguarded and as a consequence, its wildlife has also been protected. It's become a haven for plants, animals and insects and today is one of the most important wildlife sites in Wales. The five dams and reservoirs were built in two phases. Firstly, on the Ellan River and later on the Clairwen River. The four reservoirs on the Ellan River are Craig Goch, Penagareg, Garreg Ddi and Caban Coch. The last to be built, and the largest of them all, was the Clairwen Reservoir. The reservoirs serve not only the people of Birmingham, but also much of the local area and parts of South Wales. In 2004, the dams celebrated their 100th birthday. I wanted to know how the owners of the estate felt about their prized possession, so I spoke to Brian Nelson, Head of Environment and Education at Welsh Water. We're unashamedly proud of being caretakers of this unique and magical place. We want people to come and enjoy its natural beauty, to enjoy the fantastic wildlife that's here. These wonderful rare birds and plants owe their existence to the dams and reservoirs that protect their habitats. So why did the Victorians choose the Elan Valley in the first place? Well, the geology of the mountains is ideal for water storage and the narrow nature of the valleys is perfectly suited for dam construction. The Elan Valley also has a high rainfall. On average, nearly two metres falls here annually. In addition, the estate is sufficiently higher than Birmingham to allow gravity to transport the water. No pumping system would be needed. Back in the 1800s, people migrated in their thousands to the industrial factories of Birmingham. The city's population explosion gave rise to slums and in turn bad sanitation, which led to typhoid and cholera. With a huge demand for water, a new source of clean water had to be found. Birmingham Corporation came to the Elan Valley in the late 1800s and found the right combination of high rainfall and geology for dams and reservoirs. An Act of Parliament was passed in 1892 and the engineer James Manser was put in charge of construction. Blasting solid foundations from the rocky riverbed, they built four stone dams across the River Elan. 33 miles of newly built railway enabled the smooth running of the construction work. Locomotives moved up to a thousand tons of rock every day, in addition to the construction equipment and the workforce. At any one time, as many as 5,000 men worked on the Elam Valley dams, and in total, over 50,000 people were involved in the project. On the 21st of July 1904, amid great festivities, the four dams on the Elan River were officially opened by King Edward VII. One week later, water flowed into Frankley Reservoir in Birmingham. The three stone dams intended for the Clairwyn River were never built. In their place, one huge concrete dam was finished in 1952. It's actually built of concrete, but faced with stone. And that work was done by Italian stonemasons soon after the Second World War, because all British stonemasons at that time were busy rebuilding the House of Commons. 
The stone facing on the concrete structure allowed it to harmonise with the older dams on the Elan River. Whichever way you look, you get a dramatic view. Some people come to enjoy the landscape, tranquility and beauty. Others come to enjoy the estate's diversity of wildlife. The red kite takes centre stage in the Elan Valley and is well supported by buzzards, peregrine falcons and hen harriers. The Garig the Viaduct has a hidden secret. It has a submerged dam that maintains the required water level in the Garig the Reservoir during dry spells. Alongside the viaduct is the Voile Tower. Its base is 50 metres higher than the reservoir in Birmingham. This is where the water is taken from the system of reservoirs and flows 73 miles through an aqueduct. Mostly buried underground, the only signs of the aqueduct are the clearings in the trees, small red brick buildings and a series of ornate bridges. After three days and only dropping 50 metres in height, the water arrives in Frankly Reservoir to help quench the water needs of the people of Birmingham. To find out more about the water supply, I paid a visit to Penagarig Reservoir with Noel Hughes, who is manager of the Elan Valley Water Treatment Works. So here we are inside Penagarig Dam. Come on, we'll go right to the bottom. It's a long way down. It is, there's a lot of steps. Me first? Certainly. Oh, look out. Do you know how many steps there are? Well, there was 170 at the last count. <laughs> so it's no more than that, eh? <laughs> Whoa. So this is it, the base of the dam? That's right. And just behind that wall there, it's a huge amount of water. But it's just the equivalent of two weeks' supply to Birmingham. That's all it is, That's is right, it? yeah. Incredible. Come and have a look at this. 100 years old, still working as good as the very day they put it in. I'll tell you what, if I'm that good at 100, I'll be a happy man. <laughs> Come and have a look through this door. What's in here then? Just pop your head and have a look. Here we go. Wow, just look at that. Oh, 170. Oh, Noel, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. Hope oh, you enjoyed it. I did, I did, but I'm now going to go and do something far less strenuous. <laughs> Don't blame thank you. Thank you, Noel. Don't blame you. Oh. Time, I think, for some more bird watching. 180 species of birds have been seen here. Many are found on and around the reservoirs. This is the little grebe. It's pretty, but doesn't have the looks of the great crested grebe. The common sandpiper. And also the grey wagtail can be seen. And if you're lucky, you might catch sight of a snipe, along with goosander and the appropriately named golden eye. The woodlands are home to some wonderful birds, including woodpeckers, warblers, pied flycatchers, coal tits, and many others. You can often see the jet black raven flying near to the craggy hilltops, or the buzzard soaring overhead. An increasingly common sight is the red kite. Majestic, 
agile and with a distinctive forked tail, the kite is king of the skies. It mainly feeds on dead animals, small birds, mammals, worms and beetles. Birds of prey on the estate include the peregrine falcon, seen here on the nest. The elusive goshawk, which is quite a rare sighting. Five species of owl have been spotted here. This is the short-eared owl. At the lower end of the wildlife scale, you'll find a colourful and interesting array of insects including butterflies like the purple hair streak and the common blue and the cochabonde beetle. As for plants, if you like bluebells, you'll see a fantastic display here in the spring. In the summer months, the wildflowers in the hay meadows are stunning. Although the estate is owned by Welsh Water, most of the land is looked after by the Elan Valley Trust. Together, they jointly fund the Elan Valley Ranger Service. Fiona Wace is the Environmental Education Ranger. I joined her and some school children down by a pond. Fiona, this looks like a wonderful way to entertain and educate children. It certainly is, yes. We get a huge number of children coming up here each year and with this new pond, they really enjoy themselves. The wealth of life that we have under the water here and of course you can get so many important educational lessons across to them as well. I also spoke to Pete Jennings, the head countryside ranger. We are lucky, we have 70 square miles to work with and uh, we've produced a series of walks, 10 woodland walks, 10 hill walks, um, well way marked for people to you know, enjoy the countryside without disturbing any, any of the rare wildlife which we have. Um, nearly, nearly all the area is a sites of special scientific interest. So there's no avoiding those, but there are places you can direct the public where they won't cause any disturbance at all and they can have a very enjoyable day out in the countryside of Wales. This is the proper flight. The Ranger Service also organises bird watching safaris. Leading the way was Phil Ward. During the summer months we offer lots of bird watching safaris and guided walks, um, walks on top of the hills up to 15 miles or you know, so down to one little mile, short little walk and all free of charge as well, which is nice. It's, we're very, very keen on trying to actually educate people and, and promote the area to people so that we also sort of appreciate it and you know, obviously love the area like we do. For over a hundred years, these reservoirs have helped protect the many species of plants, insects and animals that now thrive on the estate. Elam Valley truly is a remarkable success story. Here's to another fantastic century of water and wildlife.